Right guys, what is going on? Buster Barnes here bringing you my review of Chelsea's 4-0 win against Crystal Palace. A very interesting game, a tale of two halves as we've seen with this team before. I'm going to be going through all of the key moments as well as giving you guys my player ratings and scoring individual players that will go towards my player of the season scoring system. If you guys enjoy these reviews please be sure to leave a like and to comment down below your thoughts on the game and your player ratings as well and be sure to subscribe to the Buster Barnes YouTube channel for Chelsea for FIFA, for Fantasy Premier League content. I did upload episode number one of my West Ham career mode, which you guys can check out in the iCard up in the top right-hand corner. Okay, guys, so notes on the game. Really nothing major happened during the first half. It was a lot of Chelsea struggling to break down Crystal Palace. They weren't looking too good themselves. Some solid defending, I have to say, from Chelsea. We really didn't let Palace in at all during the game. and um, But, yeah, attacking-wise, it wasn't too great nothing really happening players trying to make stuff happen but the way palace's lines are you can't really get in between them so it was a bit of a struggle for the team but in the second half play did open up a little bit and it did come at a bit of an ugly goal that ben chilwell smashed into the back of the net there was a bit of a scramble in the box abraham does well to compete for the header falls to chilwell who just smashes it straight at the keeper and that point blank range it is very hard to save those ben chilwell getting a Premier League goal on his Premier League debut for Chelsea. Moving on later, we did get a corner. The corner got knocked out wise. Chilwell crosses it back in, and it does find the head of Kurt Zuma. A nice key pass from Callum hudson Doy to Ben Chilwell, I do believe, as well. Zuma getting a goal. He was completely immense this game. Him and Thiago Silva were a very great partnership and was really what we were all looking forward to going into this game. Hopefully they can keep it up. The next two goals, the final two goals, were penalties. I believe Tammy Abraham winning the first one, which Jorginho does his nice little hop, skip and scores into the bottom right corner and it's replicated as well when Havertz wins a penalty. It might have been the other way around, Havertz might have won the penalty first but Jorginho did tuck that one away as well. A little bit of a confrontation between Jorginho and Abraham of who would take the penalty as Plaqueta took Abraham away and let Jorginho take it. I think it is fair enough, Jorginho is our number one penalty taker and you do have to respect the hierarchy in the club when it does come to things like this. I do feel a little bit of a shame for Tammy because he is a striker, he does want to score a goal I don't really blame him, um, but yeah, unfortunately, it wasn't going to happen with Jorginho on the pitch. But yeah, it was a 4-0 win. I think it was deserved. I wouldn't say we were flowing brilliantly, attackingly, like the scoreline would suggest. There was some penalties, some set pieces, but at the end of the day, the three points is the three points, which is what we all wanted. We're still getting into that period where the team is trying to gel together. ZX still not fit. Pulisic got a few minutes at the end as well, but nothing too substantial. So I do think that once the team is fully fit and we're sort of out of this pre-season phase of the Premier League season, hopefully we can see a little bit more fluidity in the team. But a 4-0 win, we'll take that. And I mean, guys, a clean sheet with that back line, I think I might shed a tear if we're going to keep seeing some great defending like this. We haven't seen it in a while, so that proved to be very nice indeed. Hopefully we can just carry it on into the next games coming forward. Okay, so if I get into my player ratings, guys, for the video, I will start off with Eduardo Mendy in goal. I'm going to be giving him a 6.5 out of 10. As you guys know, the base rating is 6 for an OK performance. I'm giving him a 6.5 because it's just so rare that we've watched the Premier League game with Chelsea and been confident with the goalkeeper who's in net. I've always had in the back of my mind every Chelsea game, oh, but if they get one attack, then... Kepper could just let the ball in, but with this one I felt a lot more confident and comfortable um, when the few times Palace did have the ball. Eduardo Mendy did command his box, he did make a nice block, his distribution was decent, it wasn't a great performance in the sense that he really didn't have anything to do during the game, but I'm giving him a 6.5 just because he got the clean sheet. Going up to the back line, I'm going to start off Cesar Aspilicueta, now he's only going to get a 6 because I didn't really notice him in the game at all, he did hit a few fouls, um, get a yellow card as well. He was struggling maybe to defend Eze. I mean, Eze didn't really attack that much, so you could say that Aspilicueta was being tactical, fouling him, making sure he couldn't get on the ball too much. But I just didn't really notice Aspilicueta. So I'm not saying it's a bad performance because we did keep the clean sheet, but I just think it was a fairly standard 
um, performance from our captain. And to be fair, you could maybe give him more credit as well because he is captaining the side and we did look very solid. So maybe he deserves a bit more credit there. But from what I saw on the pitch, I'm giving him a 6 out of 10. Moving on to Thiago Silva. Very, very solid commanding performance. Did some nice blocks. Blocked some counter-attacks from happening from Crystal Palace. Some nice displays of passing. They even focused on in half-time his leadership and how he directed play as well. I thought it was a great performance from him. He's going to get an 8 out of 10. And I noticed in some of my previous videos, maybe I was a little bit too harsh on some players. So maybe when in performances like these, I will try and bump up the ratings a little bit. He's going to get an 8 out of 10. I think him and Zuma were very solid. Who is who I'm going to get on to next? Kurt Zuma. Um, I think he maybe stood out a bit more as he does. He does have the pace. He does like to make a side challenge he was a beast in the air yet again and it paid off in the sense that he did score from a Ben Chilwell cross which is why I'm going to give Kurt Zuma an 8.5 out of 10 a 0.5 above Thiago Silva because he did manage to notch himself a goal great performance from him he's just proving why he is our best centre-back or at least our best centre-back from the ones that we had last season going on to left back and what a debut for Ben Chilwell, a goal and an assist and a clean sheet on his 100th Premier League appearance. And um, we can't really get any better than that. I thought he looked pretty solid defensively. There was maybe one or two times that he did look to get caught out, but he was covered for. Him and Zuma on that left side just looks so much better than an Alonso and Christensen or anything like that. It just looks a lot more comfortable. And yeah, with the goal and the assist, which really sparked our own 4 0 win as well, did the goal. I'm going to be giving Ben Chilwell a 9 out of 10, which I believe is the highest rating I've given anyone so far in these reviews and it is really well deserved a great performance hopefully you can keep it up obviously we will face tougher teams than Crystal Palace in the future so we'll see how he fares but considering I wasn't necessarily too impressed of his safe performance against Spurs this performance was the opposite and it was great from him getting into the defensive pivot Kante and Jorginho I did predict predict it to be Kovacic but when I think about it it does make more sense it being Jorginho more of that sort of holding style um Regista type play that we probably needed to avoid any gaps and we didn't really see any gaps in the midfield at all I thought they were great Kante's getting a 7 out of 10 made some great tackles some good interceptions did look to drive the broad ball forward didn't do anything that particularly stood out loads he didn't get a goal and assist so I'm going to be giving him a 7 out of 10 but still a great performance from him and we're just seeing Kante at his, you know, at his best, at his best fitness at least and hopefully for a few more games he can get back on track as being the best player in our club Going on to Jorginho next, he's going to get an 8 out of 10. I think him and Kante both performed really well. Jorginho did do some nice long balls trying to spark an attack when we were still at 0-0. Um, he did score the two penalties as well, which he tucked away nicely. So I do need to give him a rating higher than Kante. I'm going to be giving him an 8 out of 10 as well. Maybe he deserves an 8.5, but maybe I've been a bit harsh there, but I'm going to give him an 8 out of 10. Going up to Kai Havertz, I thought he looked like to be... Probably our best player besides Chilwell in the first half in terms of trying to spark an attack, trying to make things happen. He did look creative, he did get in the box and look dangerous even though no balls did meet his head unfortunately. But I did think he looked very, very confident indeed and it is just adapting game in, game out to the Premier League. And he did win a penalty as well, so for that I'm going to give him a 7 out of 10. Going to the wings, and this is probably where we see a bit of a weakness going forward. Callum hudson Doy is going to get a 6.5 out of 10. He did try and make things happen, he did do some nice runs. I can see his confidence growing as he gets more game time. Um, unfortunately though, he didn't get a goal or an assist. There was a really nice moment at the end though where he took on Mitchell and delivered a really nice ball into the box, which Abraham did steer wide unfortunately. But um, yeah, Cam I thought it was a good situation for him. I mean, especially with the speculation going around at the moment, there must be a lot going on in his head for him to have a decent performance is very nice. And I don't know what this means for his game time in the future now that Pulisic's back and that, but I think that he's still a key part of this squad and should definitely stay at Chelsea for the season going forward. Going on to the left wing, Timo Werner, he did struggle. I just think him playing left wing against a side like Crystal Palace that defends very deep was a bit of an issue for him. He was constantly trying to get on the ball though, and to be fair to him, he did make some very good runs, but unfortunately just wasn't found, and I think that's going to be a process of the team getting used to how he plays and the runs that he makes. Um, didn't score or get an assist, so I am going to give him a 6 out of 10. I really wanted to give him a 6.5, but the first half especially, he was quite poor. He really picked it up in the second half, though, so I think a base rating of 6 is fair enough from him. Tammy Abraham um, was a key big man up front, did compete for the ball well, got very physical, did try to lay the ball off as well a few times, and he was a key factor 
in two of our goals as well, winning the penalty for Jorginho, which again he wanted to take, but unfortunately couldn't. I respect both ends of that argument as well. And also for Ben Chilwell's goal, it was him competing for the header that put off the Crystal Palace centre-back, I believe it was Cuyate, to allow Chilwell to smash the ball in the net. So Tammy Abraham, for me, is going to get a 7 out of 10. So that is the starting 11. Pulisic and Kovacic did both come on towards the end of the game. They're both just going to get a 6 because they didn't really do much. They did look promising and you know, did bring some nice energy when they got the ball, but there was just nothing immaculate from them, which you wouldn't expect with the time that they had, and Pulisic obviously coming back from injury. Um, and if I'm going to give any players some points going towards my player of the season system, I'm going to give two players one point, one player two points, and one player the big three points. I'm pretty sure we can all tell who those players are going to be. One point is going to go to both Thiago Silva and Jorginho. Maybe... I'm being a bit, you know, biased towards Thiago Silva, but I do think it was a very good, solid performance from him. I think it was maybe an underrated performance as well. Jorginho did get the two goals, but I thought in general his performance was kind of fair to the rest of the team and fairly the standard that the rest of the team were. So um, they're both going to get one point. Kurt Zuma's going to get two points because he did score the goal and was just an absolute beast in this game, making some great tackles, controlling the ball well. I remember there was this really nice moment where he was running towards the ball and another Crystal Palace player was in the first half and he just turns, completely shrugged them off and it was some great defensive work from him. So he gets two points. And the three points, who else is it going to go to but... Ben Chilwell, goal assist on his first Premier League game for Chelsea, looks solid, a few maybe iffy moments, but in general looks very confident defensively, looks very confident going forward as well, and it was just a great performance from him, and really just looked like a different player than what we've previously had at left back, so hopefully he can keep that up. But those are my player ratings and player of the point system ratings as well, guys. Please let me know in the comments below what you guys think and who you would rate what score as well. As you can see on the screen now, I have tallied up the play of the season points earned so far and it is fitting out a little bit a few more players added I'm sure every player at some point will get some points on the board or you know maybe maybe some won't but most of them I think will and yeah let me know what you guys think about today's game what you thought are you excited going forward it really would be a performance like this just before we have an international break though knowing our luck and um, the international break will happen and a few of our players will pick up another injury and we'll be back to square one but fingers crossed that does not happen I hope you guys did enjoy this review slash recap of our game against Crystal Palace please be sure to leave a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more Chelsea content hope you guys have a nice day and I'll see you next time